So I have a very interesting video on chronic inflammation and anemia. Now check this out. One of the first line of defense against pathogens in our body is the withholding of nutrition or starvation from other microbes. Now iron and a few other trace minerals are required for microbes to grow. So in other words, both the good bacteria and the bad pathogens need iron or they require iron to be able to grow. So that's one of their foods. So I want to introduce you to a word called sequestration. This word describes a condition where your body is binding up or locking up iron and other trace minerals to prevent pathogens from getting that food. So the free iron that you had in the body is rapidly being bound up by certain compounds. So we have this interesting game between your body and pathogens. Your body sensing an infection and inflammation and a fever will quickly lock up that iron to prevent the pathogens from growing. The pathogen has counter strategies to break open your cells and get that iron, both the good and bad bacteria are trying to survive, but your body, if it's healthy, will be able to do its job and prevent the microbe from growing. And this is why when certain people have too much iron, they have a certain condition where they can absolutely not get rid of iron and they just have too much, they're very susceptible to getting infections. That's why. As a side note, the microorganism in Lyme disease has developed a strategy to get its food from not iron, but from manganese. So it'll, it'll just be like, okay, you can take your iron, I'll take manganese, and it'll survive that way. Now, what's normally supposed to happen is you get this infection or you have this inflammation, so you have this thing going on right here, and then you overcome the infection, and the inflammation, the fever goes away. And now this iron is available now for your cells to use to grow. But what happens when you go into a chronic inflammatory condition, okay, as an autoimmune problem, whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or whatever, you could become very deficient in iron and become anemic and feel weak. In your mind, you might say, well, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to take some iron here to feed my body and, and give it more trace minerals. Well, the problem is you're going to feed the pathogen at the same time. A much better strategy would be to handle the deeper root cause of the inflammation. Whether it is a subclinical microbial infection or just your immune system is out of control and it's attacking your own tissues. In which case, fasting is the answer to that. Regular intermittent fasting with periodic prolonged fasting. If you're new to my channel, you definitely need to see those videos. I put those down below. And in addition to fasting, vitamin D in larger amounts, minimally 30,000 IUs, but probably 40,000 or more would be necessary to help reduce the inflammation. And that would allow your body to uh, make these trace minerals, especially iron, more available to your own tissues so you can actually use it. And I thought this was interesting, especially to those who have chronic inflammatory conditions. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto, or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the U.S. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.